right, guys. Welcome back to Strong Successful Mail. So for today, I'm going to do a very entertaining article, an article that will definitely have you guys walking around with a very satisfied and smug look on your face for the rest of the day, titled, Why More and More Effinists Seem to Long for a Strong Man. And this article is obviously written by a woman, and she's going to share her, her opinion here and her story and her experiences about how she, as well as a good friend of hers and others like her, other effinists, strong, independent types, you know, are actually find themselves longing for a man in their life. Not just a man, but also a strong man. So they can obviously feel a little more safe, a little more secure, a little more taken care of, etc., etc. And what I find so interesting here is these same types that have been saying all along that, wait for it, they don't need a man. They're strong, independent, can do anything a man can do, and more, etc., etc. And we've been hearing this song and dance for decades, and it's only been getting worse and worse. And yet here, she's admitting, which a lot of people have suspected all along, that it's a bunch of crap. Okay? And at the end of the day, they can do that whole song and dance, the whole the whole BS uh, ideology, at, but at the end of the day, it boils down to, yeah, you know, we actually do want a man in our lives. Pretty funny. And I got to tell you guys, it doesn't surprise me in the least for many, many reasons here, but also the fact that these types that actually, actually want a man in their life, and a lot of them can't figure out why they don't have a man, but also the fact that Good luck trying to find an actual real man anymore. I mean, the way that our pussy society has devolved over the last 20 years, I mean, this society which pretty much tells men it's okay to cry, the society of paper straws, veggie burgers, turkey bacon, and, and don't get me started on the uh, all the bullshit uh, disabilities and food allergies and things like that that have been invented over the last 15, 20 years. I mean, think about it. You can't go to a restaurant anymore without the waiter or waitress asking you, do you have any food allergies? And yet, when I was a kid, nobody seemed to have a food allergy except maybe a peanut allergy. But that's it. But nowadays, somebody has some disability for this or so, or that or a food allergy or something and then amongst the many other things. And don't get me started about... Uh, meatless KFC. You see the commercials for that? They're trying to have meatless Kentucky Fried Chicken. Colonel Sanders is turning in his grave here. What the hell's the point? But you get my point. So I'm going to go through this, guys, and uh, you're going to see a little bit more about this because it's pretty funny when I read this article. So it starts off here. It says here, it may seem counterintuitive, but this trend makes perfect sense. Recently, a friend of mine was talking about how much she needs to have a strong, strong men in her life. Masculine, powerful, financially successful. She likes to date men like that and likes to be surrounded by them in general. Not exclusively, of course. She just wants them to be a regular presence in her life. Why? I need that, she told me. As a woman, I need that. Sometimes I need to feel protected. I want to be able to just let go. I want to be able to let, let him hold me, keep the world at bay for just a few minutes. I need them to share their knowledge with me. I want to ask them questions and get their advice so I can sharpen my money skills and the other things that men are encouraged to do in this culture that women are not. I need them to empower me to do that. And, by the way, she's an effinist herself. Now, everything she just said here goes against the whole ideology. Want them there to protect me, feel safe, listen to me, share knowledge with me. Don't they call that mansplaining? How interesting. Go, this goes to show me that uh, a lot of gals that go along with this type of thing and, and say, yeah, you know, I'm an effinist or I support the movement and all that, blah, 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 and even start to drink some of the Kool-Aid, well, they come to realize that, well, maybe this is all a bunch of crap. Maybe it's a bunch of crap that was created by some very, very angry types that, well, let's be honest, probably aren't attracted to men in general at all. And here we go. Unfortunately, these well, not unfortunately, but these types will then get to a point in their life. Well, then they can't attract guys anymore because they're they've gotten a lot older. Probably let themselves go, chop their hair, put on forty pounds, got tattoos all over their arms, have blue hair. You think you're going to attract a guy like that? Not anymore. Not not ever actually. It goes on. I know it's probably not easy for her to say this. She's an independent woman like me and doesn't want to feel like she has to rely on a man for love, money, or the recognition of her own worth. So there's what they've been programmed to think they ought to, how they ought to think, and there's what they're really, by just by nature, drawn to, want in their life, etc., etc. The BS programming isn't going to fight nature, not for long. 
In fact, women like us know you can't rely on men or anyone else for that, which is why we became so independent in the first place. What a load of crap. You just had that programmed in your head by a bunch of people you watch TED Talks on YouTube or your liberal professors in college or other angry types that are outspoken on their soapbox, and that's what you think. There are a lot of great guys out there that are certainly reliable, okay? But you think they're going to give you a shot now? Oh, hell no. But now, all of a sudden, you want this in your life. It goes on, and believe me, gentlemen, this goes on. To get to the place where women like like us are require require like us requires the process of for, forging. It usually involves circumstances in which we are so repeatedly burned that, that the heat of our pain literally changed our shape. You guys were burned, really? You want to talk about people that were burned, it's guys on multiple fronts. You know, the other day I was talking to a gal I know. And she knows what I do here on YouTube. And she she actually agrees with a lot of things I talk about, which is cool, because otherwise I obviously wouldn't know her, be friends with her. And she says something effective like, yeah, but you got to understand is that women have been burned too. And I made the case. I said, yeah, you know, a lot of women have been burned, but they're, they've been burned by the same types of guys. The small percentage of types of guys, the bad boy types, the Chad and Tyrone types. And then you then assume that all guys are like that. That's not true. However, your average guy has been burned by... All, pretty much all women, whether they are the, you know, the nines and tens, or the fives and sixes, all guys. So the gals have been burned, as she described here, by just a small percentage of the guys. Meanwhile, the guys are burned by a massive percentage of the gals. There's a difference there. And she's like, uh, didn't want to admit I was right, but I know she knew I was right. Anyhow. Now, the only option from there was to let the world hammer us into whatever it wanted us to be, or to pick up the hammer and get to work on reshaping ourselves. Yeah, I, I, I definitely picture your typical effingness with a hammer. It's, terrify, it's terrifying and painful in ways I can't describe. It requires cutting away whole pieces of yourself, your life, your dreams. But when we come out of it, we discover we are stronger than we ever, ever could have been, and uh, we are the embodiment of everything we could have wanted for ourselves as women. Well, that's so great. Then why are you obviously feeling like you're missing something in your life? Why are you suddenly longing for a strong man or men? For our presence, for our uh, our strength, our wisdom, our knowledge, our protection. That makes sense to me. And you're going to notice something, guys. There's a whole lot of round and round you go in this. I mean, it's, it. you'll see. And after all that, the last thing we want is to let the warmth in. Are you saying you're cold-hearted? We know that the heat is dangerous. We know how much it costs to get to where we've gotten. Even just warming and softening enough to admit that we need or want strong men in our lives, even in platonic ways, can be terrifying. It can feel like a failure of the forging process. It can feel like we let down our inner Amazon. Newsflash, guys don't want a gal in their life who's an Amazon. Men want soft, feminine women. Not these ball busting, ball busting masculine GI Joe types. Okay, that's a turnoff. That's like being on a date or in a relationship with another dude. And heterosexual straight men want to be with a feminine woman, not another dude. Okay. Listen to all this. We've let down our inner Amazon. Oh my God, where was she getting her brainwashing? And yet there is a truth in it. We sometimes need strong men, and we always need the masculine. Because that's what it's about. Polarity. Harmony. There's no getting around it. I've been struggling with my own feelings about men and my need for the masculine for a long time now. She just wants some sausage. When people talk about it, it's often in such a binary, hyper-traditional way that it doesn't always sit right with me. It doesn't sit right with her because she's been so programmed and brainwashed that she now has to admit that she's wrong. And last time I checked, but the gals generally don't like to admit they're wrong or take accountability for their screw-ups. She says, what's a strong man, for instance? The only men that I, that I don't see as strong are the ones who engage in toxic displays of false masculinity. And she says, example, intimidation, for instance, or the inability to apologize because it's weak. I don't need a man to be masculine or to think he's strong. Uh, Jonathan Van Ness comes to mind. I think he's one of the strongest men I've ever seen, and he might be more feminine than I am. 
Well, I don't know who Jonathan Van Ness is, but when I get done this video, I'm going to look him up, and I'm willing to bet you he's not so strong. Not so masculine, but she's going to say he's strong. And what does it mean to be feminine enough to receive the masculine energy that we women need? I don't want to bring up being an independent woman, folks. Oh, of course you don't want to bring up being an independent woman because that's not all something that you like to talk about. No effing way. I worked my ass off to get here, and some part of me seriously objects to the idea of letting a man take the lead or pay for my dinner or open a car door for me. Do you think this attitude she has here is going to change? That she's going to be able to switch it off like a light bulb to get a guy in her life? Good luck. Right here, she openly admitted it. Didn't want him to pay for dinner. Doesn't want her, him to open a car door for her. Does she sound like a whole lot of fun to you? No. I don't, I don't ever want to make myself vulnerable and weak ever again. The price of that is too high. What the hell is wrong with you? You're not going to get a guy. Newsflash. You're going to try. The only guys she's going to get are these extremely feminized, weak ass guys. And, well, to be honest, there are plenty of them out there, like I said in the beginning of the video, in this pussy society that we've been um, devolved into for the last 20 years. She'll get her guy that eat, they'll have a veggie burger with her and drink his Diet Coke with a paper straw and talk about disabilities and the patriarchy and all that. That guy she can get. But she's not going to get a strong presence through that guy. Uh, yeah, I cannot deny that. Just like my friend, I long for the masculine too. You see how this is round and round we go. Then the one, it's like there's like she's bipolar. There's the one side of her as sticking to the effinist ideology, and there's the other side. But the other side of me longs for the man. When my friend Frank takes charge of things and in, in pre-pandemic da days says, "I'm coming over in half an hour to take you out to dinner," no arguments. It feels so good to let go into that. When I'm struggling and feeling scared, I can reach out to my friend, Peter, and his protective, loving energy always makes me feel better. And honestly, as I get to know my new male friends, some of whom are far more successful than I am, it feels really good to make an effort, even a silent one, to acknowledge the masculine energy they bring into my life. It feels good to let them help me. If it feels good and is bringing comfort to your life, then open up. Open up to the masculine energy and maybe take a look at yourself and say, maybe, just maybe, I've uh, not just been drinking the, the pink Kool-Aid, but I've been guzzling. I've been doing keg stands of the pink Kool-Aid. And you know what? Maybe it's all a bunch of bullshit. And maybe it's not a bad thing to actually have a man in your life and ask for help and have him help you out and be there for you and blah, blah, blah. That we're not the devil. Maybe, just maybe, the people that put that shit in your head are seriously fucked up angry, got issues, and, by the way, probably not into men. These are important things to ask yourself. She says, sometimes I can't even understand why they would want to. I feel like such a little fish in the world, too small and insignificant for most of the men I, I consider successful to notice or care about. You feel like a little fish. I thought you were a proud, strong, independent Amazon. Don't they want to build friendship and partnership with women who are as successful as they are? Who know how to walk around the world and conquer everything they see? No. Guys don't want to be generally masculine men. The type that she actually says she longs for, whether she wants to admit it or not. They don't want these, like I said, these ball-busting, conquering G.I. Joe women. Because they have all this masculine energy. It turns them off. It's like being on a date. Or a relationship with another dude. They want a soft, feminine woman to, to counterbalance their masculine energy. She says, uh, you're soft. My always, my always want a strong man friend said. You are the embodiment of loving feminine energy. It oozes out of you. They need that. They want that. They don't want more of themselves conquering the world. They want something soft and gentle to relax into. That's exactly what I just said. Exactly what I just said. But... This woman here doesn't sound anything like soft and feminine to me. Maybe she was when she was younger, who knows, and something triggered something. And again, the TED Talks and the effinist um, professors at her colleges, wherever the hell she went and got this info and did the brainwashing, changed her. She says, I recently read a beautiful and brave article by Anna Saldamondo about how an illness 
about how an illness and a lot of soul searching helped her discover how much she needed a strong man in her life. Honestly, I wasn't sure how I'd feel about it then, and I clicked on it. I'm wrestling with this subject so deeply right now. Wrestling with the subject. She, it's just, it's killing her because she's got this effing programming in her, but yet nature is pushing her to a different direction. The article turned out to be lovely and thoughtful and something I could relate to. Ooh, she's becoming more feminine. She just said lovely. There's hope for her. And yes, it brought up a lot of turmoil for me, mostly by re reminding me how I was taught to behave in the world and particularly in relationships. Learning how to cultivate feminine energy in this world is absolutely valid and important. But the way that that often manifests and how it is manifested in my own life can be and were very harmful. Translation, she doesn't like how things are, so she's gone down the effinous path. And guess what? She's still miserable. And then there's, of course, the whole issue about how easy it is to fall into gender stereotypes and labels that confine people's sexuality. Exploring these ideas of feminine needing masculine and vice versa often devolves into heterosexual, gender binary explorations that I don't think are helpful. It's all about balance and harmony and polarity, okay? It is what it is. Again, nature isn't so uh, off, except you got mankind here trying to, to change things. I mean, right now, the movement as I call, I refer to, or the bowel movement, as some of you guys call in the comment section, is doing their darndest to mold men into being more feminine and mold women into being more masculine. And as any one, everything's so screwed up as it is. You know, one of my friends, one of my personal training clients and good friend, I, I've, I've known this dude for about almost 10 years now, and he's 62 years old, and he's gay, and I've known him and his husband for like 10 years, Fucking cool dudes, hilarious guys, and yes, I'm, I have friends that are gay. I'm friends with anybody. I don't care who you are. Black, white, Chinese, uh, what religion you are, what what orientation you are. If you're a cool guy, cool cool anybody, hey, I'm friends with you, in case any of you guys are curious. But anyhow, and this guy says to me one day, he says, uh, he no longer can tell with the younger generation, you know, if a guy's straight or not, because they've been so feminized. He can't tell. Okay, and that was believe me, all him and his friends. That was like their superpower because they could they could pick out a guy that's not straight a mile away. Boom, they know. Nowadays they can't tell because they've been so feminized. And where does that come from? The Aphonis movement and their tentacles getting in everywhere from TV, movies, media, you name it. And for these gals that are looking for a strong man, good luck. So I try to do what I do here to help guys out and kind of shake off that bad programming. She goes on to say, uh, these are all the things I'm grappling with, things I'm constantly examining, having the sense that there really is something to this, as long as it doesn't get lost in false divisions and cultural stereotypes. She had to put that. One thing I'm not contending with anyone is the idea that maybe it isn't effinist to want a strong man. <laughs> Why can't that be effinist? Maybe it's even okay for us to sometimes collapse in our sheer exhaustion over living in this world like this to be the embodiment of the damsel in distress and let our knight in shining armor take us in his arms and renew us with his kiss. Listen to her. She wants us. She's she's looking for an excuse to, to escape, to break free this effinous program she has. I mean, come, this goes right against the whole bullshit ideology. Wanting a man to take care of the knight in shining armor to, to take us in our arms and give him the kiss. There are other effinists that started this, this, the movement, they're probably turning in their graves hearing her say this. That seems perfectly effinous to me. Uh, no, it's, no, it's not. So long as the man has the same option, so long as the woman is willing to be the knight from time to time, and so long as she has her own bank account and her name on the title of the castle. She couldn't resist saying that. Guess what? No, you're not going to be the knight. It doesn't work that way. You want a masculine man? Well, first of all, good luck. You're going to have to do a whole lot of uh, deprogramming, all the BS you've been filling yourself up with for, for, for years. But you want a masculine man, you're not going to be the knight, honey. You're going to be the princess. Well, you're not going to be a princess either, but you're not going to be the knight. I'm telling you right now. Um, as my friend and I have been talking about this more, more often, and as I continue to see Effinus bravery sharing their desire to have a strong man in their lives, I'm coming to realize something. This is about something much bigger than men and women. Oh boy, I can't wait to hear what she has to say. This is the way women are rebelling against the patriarchy in our fluid-flowing, feminine way. We do want strong men. 
Oh, oh, why do we want strong men? Because we are tired of living in a world that demands masculine energy from us. Oh, interesting. It doesn't feel natural to you. It feels tough and demanding. For a typical guy, it's not going to feel tough and demanding. I mean, okay, we all have bad days, but for the gals, it does feel tough and demanding because it's not natural. Because you've been gone against your gone against nature. That's why. That's why it just feels so off and doesn't feel right with you. And you long for some help. You long for this. You long for that with that a guy can bring. There's nothing wrong with that. The problem is there's been too many people that have been saying there's something wrong with that. We are tired of living in a world that operates solely by masculine principles and dismisses and discredits feminine energy. What does our cultural pr culture prize? Work, domination, accomplishment, money, success, drive, force, volume, noise, and strength. Well, all, all those things generally go with masculine energy, drive, ambition, purpose, that type of thing. And that's what a lot of these gals are embracing and there takes masculine traits to achieve them. And they, of course pick up on those things. They become masculine themselves and it turns guys off. What does it disdain in terms of society? Rest, contemplation, compassion, openness, vulnerability, easy, ease, mystery, nuance, gentleness, and silence. Well, those lists of things she just said sound a lot like feminine energy. Her movement doesn't like those things because they are feminine traits some of those things there, and they don't like that. When I look back on my life, I feel overwhelmed by how hard I have had to shape myself to the masculine world in order to just toe the, lot, toe the line. The word succeed doesn't even come to mind, thanks to the gender pay gap and the amount of sexism I have contended within the workplace. Why do we want a strong man? Maybe because we want to be able to express our feminine energy, which is about the most rebellious thing we could do in this society. In this society, no, no. In your society, amongst the effinists, that expressing your feminine energy, that would be a rebellious thing. But in the whole world, no, that's not. But remember, it's your group, the effinist movement, that have created a lot of what we have right now. A great deal of it. And you see it everywhere, constantly being, um, I can't think of the word, refreshed. And you see it in all the movies, all the TV Radio shows, podcasts, in the media, in the schools, on, on, on. Okay? That's not how things always were. So I'm doing my part here to try to help bring things back. The pendulum has gone too far. I'm trying to help bring it back. And she knows, she feels that something's missing. She doesn't feel natural, doesn't feel right about this. Big surprise. But, again, if she's been this way for a long time, good luck trying to switch it off. Good luck trying to go back to where you once were. But it sounds to me she's got a whole lot of turmoil and confusion in her. And, it, it, and if she tries to even just uh, start dating, she's going to turn guys off. Because it's just going to be so hard for her to let go of that BS ideology and how things should be. It'll turn them off. So she's got a lot of work on herself. Not to mention, I don't know how old she is, but the older she is, the harder it will be. Maybe it's because we were done playing by the rules of man. Here we go back to that crap. Maybe because we know that we can create more space for the respect of feminine energy in this particular realm. The, the relationship realm, our realm. Well, usually relationship realm is the woman's realm because it's the woman, it's feminine energy that is about the bonding and relationships and all that type of thing. While the man's realm, the masculine energy, about success and achievements and that type of thing. Sometimes I wonder this part of the reason why there is such a... Uh, fetishism of marriage and motherhood. There are a lot of reasons behind that, I suspect, but what is one of them is that women will feel free enough in those areas to be feminine, to honor the feminine, to escape to the escape the constant tyranny of our masculine dominated culture. No matter how much the patriarchy wants to suppress the feminine, it cannot defeat the archetypes of wife and mother, especially the latter. Look, what she describes here is the patriarchy in our society. They don't want everybody to be in the masculine, as she talks about the masculine dominated culture. We want that for the guys, but we want the gals to be feminine and soft and nurturing. We don't want everyone to be like that. Look how out of whack everything is nowadays. But her movement, the FNS ideology is obviously embraced for quite some time. They don't want, they're the ones that don't want 
the gals go back into the feminine to be traditional and all that. Finishing up, she says here, knowing this, I think it's entirely possible that the desire to want a strong male partner is indeed a feminist act. No, it's not. You don't understand that. It's feminine, but it's not feminist. There's a difference. Not the only feminist act or the only valid relationship presence, of course, but one that might be far more empowering than it first appears. She had to throw in that buzzword empowering in there again. Underneath that desire in true effinism form is a swell, the rising or insistence that the world learns to embrace the feminine once more. I think what we want isn't so much the strong man, but the ability to honor the feminine in a world that has withheld that from us far too long. No, it's your movement that's withheld the feminine for far too long. You have to, it's not the world, it's your movement. It's the movement that has brainwashed you and your friends and others like you around the world that you got to behave like men and masculine and all that and be ball busting and take charge and you're in strong and independent don't need a guy and be angry as fuck that's your movement that's not the world the world with open arms will bring back the feminine but for the gals we don't want the guy the gals acting like what i just described the ball busting strong independent can do anything a man can do and more man hating G.I. Joe types. It's a total turnoff. But until they can shake that off and get that bad programming out of their system, you're not going to get these strong men that you say you long for. It's not going to happen. You may have some friends in your life, but in terms of actual relationship, good luck. The only type of guys that these gals are going to attract are, unfortunately, the many guys that are out there nowadays that drink with paper straws, eat veggie burgers with a turkey bacon and their egg whites omelets and talk about their feelings and have a food allergies. Those type of guys. And they watch The Bachelor and Bachelorette along with their girlfriend. Okay? I'm doing my best to get to swing the pendulum back, but that's one, one day at a time here. But getting a masculine man, good luck. But anyhow, guys, I'm going on too much here. I thought it'd be a really good one here to cover. And I think it's quite funny to see an effinist admitting that Maybe this whole thing is not exactly what it's cracked up to be. I'm not happy being by myself. I don't want to have to do it all the time. I like the help of a man, a man in my life, to feel safe, etc., etc., etc. This could be the beginning. Maybe more will be like this. We shall see. But my, my, my thought has always been for a long time is that a lot of these types, particularly ones that are young nowadays, in their, their 20s, they've gotten out of college, they've had all the brainwashing going, and, you know, don't need a man, blah, blah, blah. I've thought for a long time that as they get older... And they wake up and realize that it's not the movement and this BS ideology is not what it's cracked up to be. They're going to wake up later on in life and realize there's a bunch of crap and they're alone and don't have families, don't have love, don't have a guy, and they're regretful. I've done a couple articles recently about a gal in her 50s, but it took her to her 50s to realize this. Well, good luck in your 50s trying to get what you once could have had when you are younger. So we shall see how this goes. All right, guys, that is it for today. Be sure to comment down below. Let me know what you think about this. And be sure to like the video, share with your friends, and subscribe. And I'll catch you next time.